Ladies and gentlemen, Arsenal have a roadblock in the Calafuri deal that we need to get over. At this moment in time, we're going to get into that. Plus, there are some potential player outgoings as Arsenal have struck a deal to sell Nuno Tavares. Potentially, there is a French team that might be very interested in Eddie Nketiah in addition to many other potential transfer rumors and news. Arsenal have also missed out on a potential striker target to Manchester United in Zerksky, as Manchester United have landed a deal with Zerksky. All this plus more on today's video. Make sure you guys hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Let me know what you guys are saying in the comment section right now. And also, if you have any Q&A questions, put it in the comments. I'll try to get to it as soon as possible. As for now, big up to all you guys. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Let's get into all the latest Arsenal transfer news. Bang! Yes, 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 people. Let's get into it. First things first, we have this article here from Dean Jones Sports saying, what I've noticed about Arsenal is that information is slightly hard to get this summer. In the past years, I think you you would have heard, uh, uh, think you're trying to get, uh, trying to keep a door locked in terms of big information. So at this moment in time, Arsenal is doing a really good job of keeping information on lock and key, and it's very difficult for everyone to get to it. Next, Arsenal will reject Marseille's £20 million offer for Eddie Nketiah, as they are currently looking for £40 million. That is the price tag they're looking for Eddie Nketiah. Insane. So Arsenal have had a bid of £20 million for Eddie Nketiah, and they're expected to reject it. This is exclusive from Team... Talks. Also, former Arsenal Academy player and Arsenal player last season, Roel Walters, has left on a free and will be headed to Luton Town on a permanent transfer. This is a great move for, uh, for Roel Walters, and it's good to see him going to the championship with a team that's decent, that maybe they could come back up after uh, uh, after getting promoted last year in the playoffs. They had a, se they had a season to forget, but Maybe maybe they can get back up there and he can get himself some first-team football in the championship and get himself going in his career. Now, here is the potential roadblock for Arsenal for Calafuri. Arsenal at the moment have offered 40 million plus bonuses, a totaling of the amount of 50 million euros, but as well as a, a sell-on package for Ricardo Calafuri. Uh, Arsenal... And, and Bologna continue ne negotiations and desire to reach a contract. At the moment, they're offering 40 million plus bonuses. But I think the main issue is the sell-on clause. That is the main issue. If you look here, you can see that Bologna uh, are requesting 50 million plus uh, an inclusion of a sell-on clause for the deal of Ricardo. However, Arsenal so far offering 50 million but are not really looking at the sell-on clause the player and the agent are pushing to find the right co uh, co compromise between the two clubs so the agent is working really hard to get a compromise to get Calafuri to arsenal as arsenal and bologna are literally so close to getting an agreement on a fee because they they've agreed on the price but it's just do you want a sell-on clause or not? Now, the reason why they want to add a sell-on clause is because the player is 23 years old. Calafuri is extremely young still. And if he was to be, if he was to to leave Arsenal, he would he would potentially be going, uh, he could potentially double his price within a year. And if he doubles his price and they get a significant sell-on clause, then it would be a situation where you could easily see some sort of money. But also, don't forget. They have to sell uh, – when they sell this player, they're going to be getting, giving a, a large portion of the player's transfer fee to his former club, Basel. As Arsenal continue talks, Bologna insists 50 million 
uh, no plans to reduce the price tag as they owe 50% to Basel. They have a 50% sell-on clause. Madness. And no wonder they want to add a sell-on clause in case Arsenal sells him because his price could only just skyrocket. Italian international playing for Arsenal could potentially be our starting left back going next season. And of course, if anybody ever comes in for him, you could you could easily see him go for a hundred, uh, maybe 80 to, to 90 to 70 million. And in that case, if they get a sell-on fee, they will maybe get double what they get. Well, what they, what they originally paid for the player back in, in investments in the salon clause. So it all makes sense why Calafuri, there's a little bit of a, a roadblock. A, the bid has stalled. They're trying, to, they're trying to figure it out. But I don't have any doubt in my mind they're going to come to some sort of compromise and figure things out as it, it, we really are interested in Calafuri. And that is the only thing that's holding us back at this moment in time. Uh, the, the player is really appreciated by Mikel Arteta and we know that this has been one of the main, main, main for, uh, focuses that we've had this transfer window. So let's let's just not get too carried away. These things happen in transfers. You get moments where they stall. But yeah, let's get back to the Eddie Nketiah stuff. The Eddie Nketiah stuff is interesting because Arsenal now have a situation where they're in a strong position and could hold out for decent money for Eddie Nketiah. Marseille are extremely interested in Eddie Nketiah as they were about to sign Greenwood before the mayor of Marseille jumped in and said there's no way what he's done is deplorable. Nobody wants Mar uh, nobody wants Greenwood in Marseille. Let's go get Eddie Nketiah. He, you got the mayor telling them, F off, you're not getting Greenwood. And now they're going to end up trying to go for uh, Eddie Nketiah. Uh, you also have Brentford interested in Eddie Nketiah. Crystal Palace interested in Eddie Nketiah. But they already have a starting striker. You have Everton interested in Eddie Nketiah. Let's be honest. He's not. He's on the same level as Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Um, you, got, you got West Ham and then Wolves. In my opinion, he probably starts at Wolves. He probably starts at West Ham. He probably gets a couple games here and there at Everton. He doesn't start or play much at Crystal Palace or Brentford. And at Marseille, he probably leaves the line. I don't know who their striker is at Marseille. Let me know if you guys think the Marseille striker is any better. But reportedly understood that Marseille is prepared to offer 25 million euros, which is 20 pounds for uh, Eddie Nketiah. However, Arsenal wants around 35 to 40, as reported by Caught Offside. So we do want more money than what they're currently offering us. That's going to be an interesting situation. Also, Agent Bakayo Saka, as Eze, Eze has been linked to Arsenal in the past couple of weeks. We are heavily linked to Eze. We're going to have to see what happens with the whole Eze situation, as that looks interesting, ladies and gentlemen. Now, let's just go to this quickly. Manchester United have striked the deal with Zerksky. Yes, and Fabrizio Romano has broken the exclusive here, given the here you go. Um, it's basically a situation where, I, I'm not going to lie to you guys, I think this is a good signing for Manchester United, and this is a player that Arsenal was interested in. A lot of teams were interested in Jonathan Zerksky, and for £40 million, Manchester United didn't get robbed this time. They actually didn't end up paying the release clause. They negotiated a better term lower down than the release clause. And it's a situation where Jonathan Zerski now joins a Man United team that is retooling, revamping. And I think that Jonathan Zerski might actually end up being a really good signing for Man United. As for Arsenal, we were linked to him in the past, and it does look like we're not interested in Jonathan Zerski or we're not really interested in signing many strikers this upcoming transfer window. So we don't know what we're going to end up doing with the striker situation. It's very very, very interesting to see where we go from here with the with the striker situation, as we still don't know if that is going to be a thing or not. Next, we have gotten confirmation that Nuno Tavares is gone, ladies and gentlemen. Nuno Tavares is going to be headed to Lazio as Arsenal have agreed a five million pounds plus add-ons for Nuno Tavares. Yes, and a significant sell-on clause thought to be at least 
20% of the deal, depending on how Nuno Tavares does with his personal terms, this deal should be done. And I'm quite excited to see that Nuno Tavares could be headed out the door from Arsenal Football Club, as I wanted him to be sold. Now, some sad news on Arsenal's front. We thought that Celtic would come back in for Kieran Tierney and his boyhood club would come back in and try to sign and strike a deal for him. But because of financial uh, abilities, they're unable to strike a deal at this moment in time for Kieran Tierney. And right now, we don't have any suitors for Kieran Tierney. So we're going to have to figure out what we're going to do with Kieran Tierney as this is starting to become an extremely frustrating situation with everything going on with Kieran Tierney. Now, next, um, Benjamin Sesko has spoken out and said that since he's not getting transferred to Arsenal, I think uh, Tesco was seen by Arsenal and others as uh, other clubs as an opportunity as, uh, because of what he represented. Then if we don't go for him, maybe we can go back to a drawing board. So, yeah, that's David Onstein basically saying that Arsenal tried to ting with Tesco, and if it didn't work, they were gonna they, they they didn't really want to go all in on another striker at this moment in time. Now he, David Onstein also spoke about Arsenal, Arsenal and how they how they're dealing with the market. So I thought this was quite interesting. Let me just play this for you guys. Uh, if you guys can read this on the screen, Arsenal, I'll read it out for you guys also. Arsenal are always going to be active in these markets. I uh, some feel it's been a bit slow to start for them, but I don't think so. They'll have their targets in place, and there uh, there's been a Euros and a Copa America. Maybe that creates a bit of impact. Uh, if anything, we've seen Edu and the Cronky ownership in recent years is that they do really well in the market and they make their moves. They've pretty decisive and they tend to be successful. They're ready to invest. And this is the market. I'm sure Arsenal will tackle in a strong way as it, it goes on. Sorry about that guys. My dyslexia is kicking in, but I kind of feel like David Onsen is just telling us that Arsenal move very stealth in the market and that's pretty much it next um we got a, we got an update on this kid Ch uh, Ch uh, 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 Ch Chido Obi Martin Arsenal look like they might be able to secure a long-term deal with this kid as Mikel Arteta met with him face to face a decision and announcement is expected soon as reported by Academy Scoops um next Danny Almo ladies and gentlemen Danny Almo has been one of the players of the tournament uh, for Spain, and he's been absolutely outstanding. He does have injury history, but 50 million pound release clause is expected to be uh, is expected to expire on Monday. The Mirror Football understand that there is clubs both in the Premier League and in Spain ready to meet that release clause in the background as discussions are ongoing. Let's wait and see if Danny Almo to Arsenal becomes a thing, but I don't think that is most likely going to happen. Now, more stuff on Eddie Nketiah. Leicester are interested in Eddie Nketiah. We've already heard about Nuno Tavares heading out. Granit Xhaka speaking about his time at Arsenal. Bloody, bloody, blah. Uh, just want to see if there's any more stuff. Uh, this, this, uh, this, this is another goalkeeper that we're interested in. Another goalkeeper. Let me show you guys this. This is interesting, though. Arsenal have bid 50K. Guys. They want a million. We bid 50K. We bid 5% of their valuation for the player. That is hilarious, ladies and gentlemen. We didn't even bid 100K. We did not even bid a mil. We didn't. We bid 50K. We basically, Edu and them basically said, here's 50P, F off. That's, that's, what, the, that's what they did. They walked into the place, 50P, F off. Hilarious. I can't say anything else. Wolves, of course, rejected it, and we are now waiting to see if we can strike a deal for Dan Bentley, and he's most likely going to be our third goalkeeper. And Arsenal have a situation where Raya Ramsdale are both of our keepers are are currently inter international duty, and they're and they're going to reach the finals. So who's going to be back in time to play during preseason? Because neither of them are going to be there. We're going to need to sign a keeper because we also have Carl Hine who's going to be headed out 
on loan potentially very soon. So we, we currently don't know who our keeper is going to be for preseason. <laughs> it's absolute mess. Absolute mess. Uh, big up to Rea consoling Saliba at full time after Spain beat France 2-1. Um, is there more? Is there more? More on Nuno Tavares. We've already told you that. That's pretty much it, ladies and gentlemen. Nothing more to be said. Uh, nothing more to be said. As for now, I'll leave you guys to do. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Somehow it became 15 minutes long, but I'll catch you guys on the next one. I'll actually be trying to do a vibe from the 6th later tonight if I can, or maybe tomorrow. But yeah, you already know what it is. We're out of here, people. Catch you guys on the next video. Peace.